Hey everyone, with C-Power fast approaching, I thought it would be a good idea to break down how Sonar works in C-Power. This game has a surprising amount of depth, and with the game scale centering around controlling a flotilla and not just a single boat, it's not always easy to understand what is and isn't modeled. In this video, we will dive into what Sonar is and how it's modeled in the game, as well as how to employ it. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay, so if you're into that, please subscribe. First things first, what is sonar and how do we use it in sea power? Sonar is a system for the detection of objects underwater and for the measuring the water's depth by emitting sound pulses and detecting or measuring their return after being reflected. Real life sonar is very fascinating, but also really complicated. Now, this is a moment where we define where real life and video game begin to diverge. We typically think of sonar of just projecting outward, hitting something and coming right back. It doesn't really work like that in real life. Here, you can see that as the sonar hits the surface of the water, the submarine and the surface of the ocean, it bounces around and it can connect with other objects. For example, the ping that hit the surface can then hit the other submarine. It doesn't all bounce back directly to the sonar emitter. This is called multipathing. And it's really interesting, but also it's very, very complicated. If you want to understand more how it all works in real life, I would recommend the video that is linked in the top right. They interview a US Navy sonar operator and even get into the instruments that sonar powers. I would really recommend watching it, but I would also really recommend for you to understand that sea power is a simulator. Difference between a good sim gamer and a rivet counter is that the former understands where real life ends and abstraction needs to begin. The way that Sea Power models sonar is much more in depth than the first example, but it doesn't go to the extreme of modeling things like multipathing. It strikes a good balance between simulating it without bringing your entire computer to its knees with needing to do endless calculations. So let's start diving into how Sea Power models it. Remember our definition of sonar? In Sea Power, sonar is a tool that we use to find enemy ships or submarines. And there are two types of sonars, passive and active. Passive is the easiest one to understand because if you have ears, then you will understand it. Firstly, your ship must contain a passive sonar system. If it does, then your ship essentially has ears. If a noise happens and if it is close enough and the environment is quiet enough, then your passive sonar will hear it and you will be notified. Now, just like your ears, it is hard to hear things if you are talking. What do I mean by this? The sound of things happening around your ship will impact how much you can hear or how much your passive sonar can hear. If your own ship is going very fast, then that means the propellers are spinning faster and that is creating more noise. This reduces your ability to, do, to detect things via passive sonar. The environment around you can also mask the sound of enemy vessels. Rain hitting the ocean generates sound. Waves crashing into each other or AKA the sea state generate sound. All of this is modeled in sea power. The world is alive and live things make noise and more environmental noise increases the threshold for an enemy ship to surpass in order to be detectable. For now, this is a good baseline for passive sonars, but we will come back to this a bit later. Let's go dive into active sonars. Active sonar is different. This is a system that actively makes a noise and then it listens for the return from here, it is able to build a picture of what's out there. Now, this is where things will get interesting. We will get into the different types of active sonars that are in the game. But before we do that, we need to talk about what happens when the active sonar ping is made in game, because it's not really easy to understand at first. So lean in. In this illustration, we have a friendly submarine and three enemy submarines. The friendly submarine is near the surface and you also see that the thermal layer is defined. If you are unfamiliar, the thermal layer is basically a transitional layer between the warmer mixed water at the surface and the cooler deep water below. Sonar behaves differently at different temperatures and the thermal layer being modeled helps to represent this behavior in the game. Sea power defines the different ocean areas as above or below the thermal layer. As I said, this layer has an impact on sonar, so it is important to understand. As the sonar ping goes out, you can see that it begins to bend and it begins to differ in trajectory, especially when it hits the thermal layer. 
Remember how I said sonar behaves differently at different temperatures? This is what you are seeing. Sonar in real life is impacted by a lot of environmental things. The salinity of the water, the temperature, it all impacts how sonar travels through the water and that can impact the range of it. Sea power does model some of this to a reasonable degree. And the key thing to understand is that sonar does not project outward in a straight line. It will bend and that can result in areas that cannot be reached by sonar. So let's break this down. This is a submarine that makes an active ping. It is able to easily detect the other submarine that is nearby that is also above the layer. Now, the two submarines below the layer, one of them is able to be detected. The other one is not. Why is that? The thermal layer had an effect on the sonar and it changed directions and it was able to miss the submarine. This area where the submarine is, is defined as the shadow zone. It is undetectable to the original submarine. No matter what the submarine does, it will not be able to detect this sub in this shadow zone. This is actually a thing from real life and how to calculate it is confidential in real life. And in game, it's not easy to know if you are in the shadow zone or not. But the important thing for this guy is to understand that this area can exist. Your ship can be at a full stop, sending active sonar pings out and not see anything, but something can actually be out there hiding in the shadow zone. Now that we understand how sonar can move through the water and how it interacts with the thermal layer, we can talk about the different ways to employ sonar. Number one, and the easiest way is from a submarine. We have already seen this in the illustration, so we already have it in the back of our head. We right click the contact on the map and we get the information panel. This is going through the process of elimination based on what we can hear and detect. The crew is whittling it down to identify what ship we are hearing. As we hear more, the confidence level increases. Our active sonar is now on and we can get a more accurate read. You can see the contact on the map has changed. It was a noise coming from this area within the yellow circle, but now we see it has changed to be an exact location that's being returned by the active sonar. The thing here to understand is that a submarine sending an active ping is very pointed or directional. You will not be able to see or hear things that are behind you. The sonar emits from your nose. Additionally, submarines have the benefit of being able to be at the surface underwater and being above or below the thermal layer. So the sonar emitter has the benefit of being able to originate from above or below the layer so by being below the thermal layer, you will have a better chance at detecting another submarine that's also below the layer with you. The next one is from a ship. Ship sonars emit from a sonar dome that is located on the bottom of the ship. These have a much wider field of view of the water, so they can see a lot and do not suffer as much from a blind spot like a submarine. The issue with a ship sonar is that they cannot emit from below the thermal layer, so they are more at risk of not detecting things below the thermal layer. For both submarine and ship sonar dome radars, you utilize them the same way. By using the sensor menu on the taskbar and click active sonar, you will be able to hear the active sonar emitting when you put your camera below water. The third method is VDS or variable depth sonar. Unlike a ship radar dome or submarine sonar, this is not directly part of the ship. The VDS looks like a little vessel that is attached to the ship and it gets deployed, assuming you meet the speed requirements. If you try to deploy this and do not meet the right requirements, it will tell you at the bottom. In your sensor menu on the taskbar, you can deploy the VDS and decide which depth you want it at, which is unlike the other active sonar systems. You can deploy the VDS above or below the thermal layer. The VDS is neat because it gives you the flexibility like a submarine to be able to emit a sonar from above or below the layer. It also has a very wide field of view so there are less blind spots, unlike the submarine sonar. The only issue is that it takes a long time to deploy. You have to maintain a certain speed. If you go too fast, then it will retract. The next active sonar system are helicopter deployed sonar buoys. And these are very, very powerful. They are powerful for two main reasons. One, you can deploy several of them at the same time. And two, the sonar buoys make very little noise. Unlike a radar dome that is strapped to a moving ship that is having to deal with the flow noise or the noise of the water rushing past the ship, the sonar buoy just sits there and listens. The ability to deploy multiple of these allows you to triangulate to precisely pinpoint where enemy submarines could be. Helicopters are really fast compared to submarines, so if you get a whiff of something, you are more than likely going to be able to deploy enough buoys to get a location on them very fast. Deploying these are very easy. If your ship has helicopters, then on your taskbar, you will see an airplane symbol. 
from here you can click and select a helicopter select asw mission or anti-submarine warfare the helicopter will come out of it out of its hangar and then take off as soon as it is up you can click the sonar buoy and right click on the map and from there the helicopter will go and deploy now from here we can talk about two ancillary systems that are also based on helicopters First, let's talk about dipping sonars. These are very similar to VDS, but they are deployable from a helicopter. The way you deploy it is exactly the same way as VDS, but you just need to be at the minimum altitude for a helicopter. The next is the MAD or MAD system, which is technically not sonar, but let's talk about it anyways. MAD or Magnetic Anomaly Detector is an instrument that is used to detect minute variations in the Earth's magnetic field. If a submarine is close to the surface and your helicopter flies over it at the lowest altitude, it may be able to detect an anomaly, and that means it has found a submarine. To use this, you just need to be at a low altitude and you will see MAD get deployed. The only last thing to mention about helicopters is that they are great because they also carry torpedoes. So not only can they quickly find submarines, but they can quickly action on that information and they are relatively safe compared to ships who can eat a torpedo. Submarines basically can't touch helicopters in sea power. Now, speaking of torpedoes, we can get into the last way to use active sonars and that is from active sonar torpedoes. These are basically torpedoes that have a small active sonar emitter on them. They are fired out of their torpedo tube, head toward where they were told to go, and once they reach that destination, the torpedo seekers goes active, and the torpedo follows a predetermined search pattern. These emitters are, of course, much weaker than a ship-based sonar system, but they are able to quickly reach out to an area, and if they do find something, they're able to neutralize it on their own, because they are a torpedo after all. Now that we have completed active sonars, we can go back to passive sonars to cover some more things real fast. There is one other way to use passive sonars that I did not mention before, and that is a towed array sonar. This is basically a really long hydrophone that is dragged by a ship. It is a passive sonar system, so it is there for listening only, and it will help your ship be able to hear contacts better. This has the same limitations as a VDS in terms of needing to maintain a certain speed for it to stay deployed. Another thing that is not obvious in sea power is sonar convergence. This is modeled in the game and it's very powerful. As sonar is emitted from a ship, we know it'll split up a bit based on all the environmental factors that we covered. What we also know is that in real life and in sea power, things converge. When this happens, it allows for the ship to have enhanced listening ability. In sea power, this is modeled at the, at the 30 and 60 nautical mile range. There is a 10 mile buffer to this area. So there are two easy ways to visualize this. The first is to think about a graph where you have X as distance and Y as signal strength. You can see as the distance grows, the signal strength drops off un until it doesn't exist anymore, but it increases again when it hits the 30 mile range. And this repeats again at 60. In a top down view, you can think about this in a different way. There is an immediate area around your ship where you can hear and then things start to drop off until you reach the 30 mile range where the sonar convergence happens and you have enhanced listening ability. Like I said, there is a 10 mile buffer of where this phenomenon happens. At this point, you should have a really good idea of how sonar works in sea power. So from here, we can cover over the last few topics. One is how to hide from sonar. The less noise you make, the better. Your aspect or the cross section that is hit by sonar also really matters. If you're in a submarine and if you keep your noise pointed at a ship, you have less surface area that can be hit by the sonar. So you have a lower chance that you can be seen. If a sonar hits you on the side, then you have a higher chance to appear. You can also take advantage of environmental noise. If there is a flotilla of several different ships, you can hide between them. A sonar from one ship can have its capabilities reduced in certain directions because another ship is making noise there on the surface. The last thing I want to leave you with is a go-to tactic that is easy to remember. It's called sprint and drift. The how to do it is basically to sprint your ships at a high speed for a certain interval and then cut engines to drift and then you can listen for enemy submarines. 
This will allow you to cover ground really quickly while also pausing for gap to listen and to see what comes up. I have been using this in five mile intervals to make each drift and I've been having a lot of success with it. I hope everyone found this video helpful. I come from a combat flight simulator background. I am not a Cold War Naval expert. My Naval Sim experience is really only in the Aegis sail and in World War II U-boat. So this was a video that I really wanted to make because I wanted to sit down and learn it for myself. So I hope you learned along with me. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And I hope you all feel prepared to use sonar in sea power, naval combat in the missile aid. If you would like to help, please subscribe. Thanks and have a good one.